This first Sunday of Lent, I want us to look at Mark chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 9 through 15 from the New Revised Standard Version. And here's how Mark tells the story. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now I know that It was only a few weeks ago on a Sunday during Epiphany, the one that we call Baptism of the Lord, we looked at the first part of this. Today, though, the baptism narrative is only the beginning. We need to look past that to what comes after. A big part of the challenge as we do this is just to look at Mark and to avoid that tendency that we sometimes have to kind of mentally mush the Gospels all together. The question is really, what does Mark tell us, and is there anything unique in what Mark gives us? Now, according to Mark, John has had crowds from Judea and Jerusalem coming to be baptized in the River Jordan as a sign of repentance and for the forgiveness of the sins they were repenting or turning away from. Then in verse 9, Jesus comes from somewhere else. He comes not from Judea or Jerusalem, but from Nazareth in Galilee. This is very different as Jesus comes from what the writer Stanley Saunders said, or what he calls a that Jesus comes from a third-class village in a second-class province. And the Greek is a little weird, though not every commentary writes about it. Sometimes they just see it as a weird variation. But the more I looked at, at it, the more I thought, what if it's not just a strange Greek variation? What if it's intentional? And w- what is so unique in Mark here, where everyone else comes to be baptized in the Jordan, Jesus, it literally says in the Greek, comes to be baptized into the Jordan. So everyone else comes to be baptized in something. Jesus alone comes to be baptized into something. And it makes sense in a way, because we talked about a few weeks ago, how the sinless one, the guy who has lived a perfect life, Jesus, chooses to identify with broken, messed up, confused us. And he begins from that moment to follow a path that leads to our rescue, our salvation. Now, Mark doesn't tell us about a crowd experience that comes here. Instead, Mark tells us about what Jesus alone experiences. He sees the heavens torn open like the curtain in the temple will be torn apart at his death. And that which is always there but which we cannot see, heaven, is revealed and God the Father speaks his heart over his son with these two Old Testament quotes. Now, one of them is taken from a psalm that the psalm in its entirety professes that God will work through his son, his anointed king, against every power and rule on the earth. The other is a quote from the servant songs of Isaiah, the songs that carry the idea that through the suffering of the servant, others will be saved. So having spoken that over Jesus from the voice of the Father, immediately we're told the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. And there are 40 days there of lots going on, all apparently at the same time. There is temptation from the adversary, but Mark doesn't go into a lot of detail about that. He he just is not concerned with the specifics. And the wild beasts are there, and they are not considered safe and tame. They are supposed to be scary because scary stuff is in the wilderness. It's where the wild things are. Then finally, there are the messengers of God who wait on Jesus there in the wilderness. And all of this is because of what Jesus was baptized into. A mission where the Father would stand with him against every power of the world, but in which his sacrifice would work the hope of salvation. Jesus comes out out of that wilderness with a new understanding and a message and the power to work miracles. And then he begins to speak. Then he says that the time has come. 
the kingdom of God is present and it is good and it is what you need and you should believe in it. And there's kind of a backward parallel in all of this. Jesus, or excuse me, Israel came through the Red Sea, went into the wilderness for 40 years and found there some good, some bad, but they were sustained there by God. But then when they were tested, they failed a lot. Jesus gets it right, but parallels all of it. And there's also kind of a forward parallel for us. Lent is that 40-day period where we acknowledge our own wilderness. You know, we give some things up, and we acknowledge that we, in one way or another, we're spending time in the wilderness. The parallels may seem distant, but the more we think about it, maybe the more real they become. We may not feel like we see the demonic in a real way, but let's face it, we know that we encounter people who are not kind or who are not uplifting, and if anything, they would like to pull us down. The wild animals may not run amok, but there are dangers out there. There is risk in the world. And we may not see angels ministering to us, but we find the grace of God providing for us, watching over us and carrying us through so many things. You know, but then Jesus came out of his wilderness reflections that time there with this new sense of mission and purpose and message. He clearly knows his place in the world and what he is supposed to be about in that world. You know, that's not a bad way for us to come to the season of Lent. Know that God speaks to us, each of us, as his beloved as well. Jesus worked the plan that we might have through adoption, what he had just in who he was. So to accept Jesus into our lives is to have God know each of us as his beloved daughter or son. And he is well pleased just to have us be a part of his family. And I have to admit, Lent is a little weird for me right now. If Lent is about giving things up, I kind of feel like I've had a year of Lent already. And if anything, that we're just going into Lent year two right now. I really don't feel quite Lentified, and I know that's not even a word. I wasn't even sure at first what to give up <laughs> this year for Lent, but I worked through that part. But I always think of Lent as this time for deeper spiritual reflection. And honestly, I have to admit, I have read more, learned more, and written more in the past year than I ever have in my faith journey ever. If I'm looking to step that up, I'm not exactly even sure what that would look like at this point. But studying this passage this week really helped me a lot. The idea that Jesus came out of the wilderness with a new understanding of where his life was going and what he was about and what his message was. That helps me a lot. Because I think we are beginning to look toward getting past the pandemic and seeing our lives open back up again. People will be more in motion. Church will hopefully be more like church, but things will still be kind of new and kind of different as we work through how to get it all going again and maybe even reflect on how some of the things we've learned along the way during the past year are going to affect who we need to be going forward from this point. I hope that in some of this unexpected home time, you've already found some opportunities for learning and growing in your relationship with God. I remember John telling me about getting into the Chosen video series about Jesus. You know, that was something that was unexpected, but in the past year, it's been impacting people. Those moments have still been coming for us even during the pandemic, and they've come in a lot of creative forms. Let's let those creative experiences of growth and grace continue to work in our hearts and in our lives. But let's also let this Lent be a time of preparation, not just for resurrection celebration like it normally is, but for what God has for us as believers and as a church for where our future is moving, getting past the pandemic and sharing what Jesus has for us to share. As the Holy Spirit works in our lives, we are reminded as well, we were not baptized in something but into something, the work of God's grace in a wilderness world. Let's pray. God, we pray that these weeks, this season of Lent, 
would be a time of renewal and growth. But God, we're hoping to just be continuing the learning and growth of the past year to keep learning new lessons, to keep letting the lessons we've learned move and shape us. But God, as a church, we would also hope to look to the example of Jesus. He came out of that wilderness with a new sense of mission, a new sense of purpose, and a clear understanding of the message he had to share. God, we pray that these coming weeks, as we begin to move toward and to see that opportunity to move out of the pandemic, And to begin to be church again, or at least what is more familiar to us in our experience as the church. God, would you help us? We would like to find that same sense with your Spirit's help of mission, of purpose, and of message. That we will be the people that you are working to shape us, to transform us, to be your people. Speaking your love, your good news proclaiming our faith, impacting our world. Move and prepare and lead us through this, that we will come out ready to do what you would have for us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to read from the Psalms, verses 4 through 7, and then make that our blessing for this week. The psalmist writes, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. And to make that our blessing, may you come to understand fully that you can walk your present life in Jesus' footsteps. May you learn more every day that your Savior is already filling your life with opportunities to glorify him. May you experience deeply that God loves you and is committed to you. And finally, may you realize completely that our good Lord doesn't think of you based on your mistakes, but rather based upon the depths of his love for you.